Here we are in this little garden uh, that is hidden from the, the street, very, very quiet. You, you can find uh, uh, silence that it's not so usually to find in Naples. Today I am right here in Naples to speak about Neapolitan Baroque music. And since I am a keyboard player, I will also focus on the role of the keyboard at the time. In the last seven years, together with my ensemble, I have researched and worked about sacred and opera music from the Neapolitan Baroque. In this way, I had the chance to deepen and to love this incredibly beautiful repertoire. We can start to think that Naples was a uh, a center of uh, cultural and musical life uh, since uh, Charles d'Anjou in the 13th century. During the Angevin period, Naples was a place where musicians from France, from Europe, came to play and to propose their masterpieces. For example, Adam de la Halle uh, came in Naples for his uh, Jeu de Robin et Marion. Later, also, Aragonese period connected Naples with the most important places in, uh, in Europe. This put Naples in, in the mainstream of, uh, of musical life. After the Aragonese period, when Spanish uh, came in Naples with the arrival of Charles V, Naples showed his best features. Between the 16th and 18th centuries, Naples has been one of the most important centers of European culture, as it can be seen, for example, in literature, science, philosophy, figurative arts, and even more in music. In fact, in this period, the music practice that was previously limited mostly to the upper classes of society started to spread widely throughout the population. Music was everywhere, in the palaces of the court and the aristocracy, in political and religious public ceremonies, in churches, confraternities, monasteries, and later on, starting from the second half of the 17th century, of course, in theaters, with the advent of the very famous Napolitan Baroque Opera. This frenetic musical activity increased the demand of professional musicians. For this reason, the study of music became the primary specialization in some charitable institutions which were called conservatori, because they served to conserve and preserve the orphans and abandoned infants of the city. Uh, the transformation of the conservatories from uh, orphanage uh, doing uh, um, all activities, different activities, to um, the specific uh, musical institution was uh, very, very important for the development of um, musical life in Naples. The governors understood that uh, introducing um, uh, the pupils to music uh, could be an opportunity to increase the financial um, positions of the conservatories. So uh, many of the pupils uh, were prepared, strictly prepared, to learn uh, keyboard rudiments, uh, instrumental uh, um, tec techniques, uh, to sing, all, uh, all of them. And uh, uh, some of pupils were also castrati. One of the main reasons for which Neapolitan conservatories were so successful and famous in Europe was to have developed a very effective and original method for teaching composition, which was extensively based on keyboard improvisation through a very specific tool called Partimento. And now I would like to bring you inside Santa Caterina Church, just behind me, where there is an obstacle that I can use to better explain this partimento practice. Partimento was invented in Naples at the beginning of the 18th century. It was used without interruption till the 20th century. 
Maestri and composers like Gaetano and Rocco Greco, Alessandro Scarlatti, Francesco Nicola Fago, and later on Francesco Durante, Leonardo Leo, and many, many others devoted themselves to teaching through partimenti. For example, here I have a partimento written by Gaetano Greco that is very interesting for several aspects. First of all, we can read there are several clef. At the beginning, we have the treble clef. After two bars, we have the alto clef, then the tenor clef, and at the end, the bass clef. We know that this piece is supposed to have four voices. And then if we look at the writing, we understand that actually this partimento teach how is written a fugal exposition because we have four times the entrance of the team in several voices. Now we can listen what Gaetano Greco have written to have an idea. and so on. So this is only the draft composition and the student has to fill it out with the other voices and to create a complete real fugal exposition. So now I will try to improvise on this partimento a complete fugal exposition. students became able to play music better, they became mastricelli, that means that they could uh, teach music to the younger pupils. These systems, very regulated systems, gave the possibility to transmit this heritage. In fact, we have not so many uh, sources of, um, for example, methods, but uh, we have uh, the famous Spartimenti, about which uh, Andrea uh, spoke very deeply, uh, that was nothing, that was not something very clear, but was such a, a code, a code, a, a secret code, but very well known from the, the pupils and the teachers. As Pietà di Turchini, we are trying to transmit this heritage to the younger generations. And we uh, constituted a, a children's choir. The important things for us is that they are uh, aware that uh, to be Neapolitan is uh, not only to be uh, in the city of uh, the sun, of the sea, of the pizza, but it's also uh, the occasion to discover that we are in the city of the most important musical heritage uh, probably in Europe. Not only religious uh, music uh, or the activity in the conservatories uh, or the political ceremony was the occasion to do music, but also, for example, uh, in the middle of the uh, uh, 17th century, the introduction of opera. We can see that with the, under the um, uh, viceroy of uh, Ognate uh, started the tradition to play opera in the royal palace 
and then after a few years uh, it landed on uh, the Teatro di San Bartolomeo that was the most important theater for uh, tragedy uh, opera before the construction of uh, the San Carlo Theater. The important thing is that uh, uh, there was always uh, um, a research of innovation of uh, original way to, to write music. Uh, this is really a characteristic, something uh, that um, linked together all the um, uh, musical life in Naples. It's difficult to concentrate in few words the polyedrics and the incredible uh, productivity of musical life during the centuries in Naples. Each domination, each different dominations, uh, each politic uh, event, uh, also the catastrophes, uh, for example, the eruption of uh, Vesuvio, earthquakes, uh, the plagues, uh, etc., created and changed the conditions. I think that uh, this uh, capacity to be always innovating, always uh, original, always uh, looking for something special and new is uh, still alive in, uh, in Naples. We can see it in uh, literature, in cinema, in art. It's a city where you feel uh, always the energy uh, of uh, Renaissance. If you go on the top of the Vesuvio, you can see the remaining of uh, the lava, but you see also the richness of uh, vegetation and uh, the trees, uh, etc. So Naples is like a phoenix that rises from the ashes. Mm -hmm.